Welcome to the Bums Corner Coast to Coast podcast. The views and opinions expressed in this show are those of the hosts and are not those of Bums Corner Media Enterprises. This program contains strong language. Listener discretion is advised. Listen at your own risk. God, I hate this game. Welcome everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is the 45th running of the Bums Corner Coast to Coast running of the Bulls. Release the hounds. <laughs> the Bulls, as it were. The so, bull, Release the bullshit. <laughs> release the bullshit. I like it. So, And again, I know I reiterate this every month, but I, I'm so blown away that we're still doing this. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. The only thing that's that's more remarkable than than the length of our friendship is the length of our podcast. <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> typical. I think uh, old me would have been bored like five or six times by now, and like restarted different hobbies within yeah. that four year time span. So I, I'm proud of us for for keeping at it. It's like a marriage. You gotta gotta keep it. Uh... I, I don't know. I don't like know. Once a month, you check in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you still, look, yeah. yeah, yeah. I dig it. <laughs> so, um, the past couple of episodes, we we've sort of gone off and done our own thing, and after the reunion, I thought, well, let's just get back in and settle into our routine. Right, and back to basics, back to the original. Yeah. Yeah, you know, our, our original formula. Yeah. And bam, out of nowhere, Tom finds this fantastic article <laughs> that's, that's full of stats. And, yeah. and I love stats. So yeah. uh, we're, we're closer. Eventually, we're, we'll get yeah. to like our, our old formula. But we're going to shoot for back to normal next month. Ish. Sure. Ish. ish. Everything's ish. Yeah. Eventually, we will yeah. talk about the Short Circuit movie, too, with our, our, our amazing crossover oh, with the What yeah. the Fuck guys. But we'll get there. Um, again, no rush. I, I do not want to sit down and watch that. I don't mind. I'm, I'm eager, to, actually, you know, regarding the Short Circuit thing, because I recall that movie not being good. Yes. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I recall not not seeing what apparently everybody else saw. Um so, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to kind of tear to, to to watch that again and and discuss with uh, with the, with the with the what the fuck post. I, I'm right there with you. I I guess even at that young of age, I didn't see the appeal. So yeah. I saw the movie once, maybe on HBO around that time, mm-hmm. you know. But I saw the video for Who's Johnny six or seven thousand times on MTV. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I think my, my ire came from that more than the movie itself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, annoying song, horrible video. Right? <laughs> Nonstop. Yeah. And, and, I mean, if you remember at the time, it seemed like every other movie that came out, Steve Gutenberg was in it. So There was a couple of years there in the 80s that, that Gutenberg just dominated. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, but anyway, so um, again, Tom found this beautiful nugget. And, uh, well, do you want to, why don't you do the lead in since it was your find? Tell okay, about sure. What you, what you discovered. Um, well, in my, in my, my, as F calls it, my, my truffle pig for news uh, <laughs> endeavors, I, uh, I, I came across this survey. It was done by an organization called casino.org, which I know absolutely nothing about. Um, but the uh, it basically they, they, they surveyed several a couple thousand people to determine how you know their level of geekdom or nerddom or dorkdom um, across the country, and basically they looked state by state, city by city, uh, and determined you know uh, to what extent the uh, the. the the people self-identify as geeks, nerds, uh, yeah, geeks and nerds or dorks. 
And so mm-hmm. it was an interesting kind of find. If you want, I can read the the the, the article that I found, not the not the, the source material because it's extensive. We can get into that if we've got time. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, I want to dig into the minutiae, but go ahead and knock out the article. Yeah. I think it, let me, it, let me, it's on let me, a couple of the points. Yeah, I'll knock this out. All right. Revenge of the Nerds. Survey shows 70, 72% of Americans self-identify as geeks, nerds, or dorks. We've come a long way from stuffing that random trekker into a locker. According to a new survey, there are now more nerds in this country than you may think. Or maybe you know that already, because you likely count yourself among them. The poll of 2,000 people from Casino.org revealed 72% of Americans identified themselves as nerds, geeks, or dorks. Using some 10,000 raw data points, uh, MMM data points, not sure what that is, but we'll figure it out. Uh, the website dove deep into geek culture and even ranked the nerdiest city, the nerdiest city in the U.S. Uh, for one thing, the number of most popular fandom in the country is Harry Potter according to the survey. Uh, And while one might assume the tech industry had the most self-identifying nerds, it's actually law and legal, according to the poll, with 85% of the people in that line of work identifying as such. Cosplay was considered the number one nerdiest activity, uh, the survey revealed, with almost 70% of the respondents classifying it as a nerdy hobby. No shock there. The survey even parsed what we're geeking out about in any given state, broken down by internet geeks, the most common in states including Texas and Florida, tech geeks, whose habitats include California, New York, and Colorado, and movie geeks, common in Georgia, Massachusetts, and Oklahoma. There are also book geeks found in Alaska to Nebraska. According to the poll, the nerdiest city in the U.S. is Austin, Texas, and the nerdiest state is Rhode Island. By contrast, in Maine, 75% of the population said they were not nerds. Yeah, you're so cool, Maine. To the former point, according to the poll, Columbus, Ohio, had the second highest concentration of geeks, nerds, and dorks, followed by Arlington, Virginia, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Burlington, Vermont. So, obviously, mm-hmm. Columbus, Ohio caught my eye. Um, right. When I saw the headline, I the, the reason I clicked was, all right, Columbus has got to be on this list somewhere. <laughs> um, in, 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 a, in a bad way. Um, right. We are, we are. Columbus is a, a very tech-centric. Yes. Uh, you know, the industry is there. Uh, we've got a population, I think, that, that are forward-leaning, and I think, often early ad- adopters of, of emerging technologies. Um, if not even, you know, if not adopters, I think early explorers. Yes, so absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I was like, hey, Columbus has got to rank somewhere on this list. And right. Course, number two. <laughs> and, and absolutely. Your, your point to the industry. Yes, there are, there are several um, tech companies that headquarter here. So that makes sense. You've also got 60,000 plus Ohio State students. So right. having a huge um, university presence there didn't hurt. Yeah. You've got, a, you know, you, people, you're, you're, you know, OSU draws uh, right. people from across the country around the world. And yeah, yeah it, it, they bring in, with in them fact, their, their technology. Like that, the top three, Austin. Yes, absolutely. That. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt, Columbus makes sense, and Arlington does too. I mean, if you think about the people that actually live in Arlington, that tracks. You know, there, there's a yeah. lot of tech centric jobs in that area, so that exactly. totally a makes of, sense. A lot of cybersecurity and, and, and you're talking yeah. government type stuff, and yeah, it's in the periphery, engaged in business with with the government and military. Yeah, Arlington makes total right. sense. Absolutely. So when um, I, I read Tom's article and I thought, okay, this is interesting, you know, but what else are we going to talk about? And then I, <laughs> I actually, I, I pulled up the, um, the article that that article was based on, like on mm-hmm. casino.org's website. And I thought, oh, easily, this is a wealth of information that we can dig into, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it is interesting. Um, 
especially when they break it down throughout the USA, the the, the nerd preferences, you know. And yes, you know, it's, it's curious. They don't. They don't. Obviously, we don't, we have to discern the you know the, the why ourselves. But you right. know, Kentucky is a book book geek state. Yeah, and, Never and again, I think. That. Uh, no, and I I didn't know what internet geek meant either, so I had to look that up. And it, the description that I found just by a quick Google search makes it sound like it's just programming, you know, like building websites and things like that. Okay, just so, coding and, and doing yeah, so HTML fun, and right JSON sort so, of stuff. So sure, knock yourself out. So, uh-huh. uh, you know, I, I don't, that's not that far off from tech geek. I don't think personally, but you know, yeah, that, yeah my thing is tech geek, tech geek in my head sort of would, would walk lockstep with internet geek. Yeah. Because of, um, you know, the internet of things. Sort of exactly. And maybe, maybe a that idea breakdown that. Is, is software hardware, I guess, maybe if you want to look at yeah. it that way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and even hardware you can makes... break down to oh you know, god, sort of, you know, god, yeah, the server <laughs> device, <laughs> you know, the <Right>. tower, <laughs> yeah, right. And um, the other point that I thought was interesting that they said that the nerdiest of professions was in legal, which yeah. didn't make sense because I mean I I can't fathom any law office having as many like. Um, model mechs and desks as a, a tech support farm. I th- or I th- even like walking through the engineering department looking at the stuff they have on their desk. It's it's not right. the same. Uh, but see, that's the difference. I think I think law... I, I think law and I think book geek. Right. Um, simply because they've got to be able to familiarize themselves with the, the sum total of... Sure of human legal precedence and experience. Right. Um, and again, I don't know. I mean, I know, uh, Oh God, Weston, I forget what the, the early on, there was a search engine back in the day it was Weston wood or something. I forget what it was, but that was like the first online legal. Oh, like, right. Certified approved database. Um, right. To, to, to search, you know, quickly as you know, for the eighties, uh, you know, legal precedents and, and things like right. that. Western and that Wood. makes sense. Uh, but I will take your word on it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, one one other thing that I thought maybe might have skewered the numbers is the fact that it's um, it was the poll was written by Casino dot org, which maybe mm-hmm. is pulling more people from the legal arena than the technology arena to begin with. Yeah. So if if they if they surveyed two thousand people, maybe the odds of one of those two thousand coming from, you know, law versus tech might be a little right. bit higher. Yeah, I think yeah. Obviously, you know, given the source, uh, the, right. the data is going to be skewed. No, exactly. Just like every other, just like any poll that that yeah, is out absolutely. There. You know, you the know, audience and, and again with. with with just two thousand people, yes, the numbers are going to be a little yeah. bit wonky, but it it was fun. I mean, it was a good read. I liked it. Um, yeah, so, and it's interesting. You know, it is kind of interesting. It's kind of and it is kind of fun. It's like eh. yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the big picture wise, I think it's interesting to look at, um, you know, compared to like I was like it was in the eighties, um, right? There, you know, it was very. <laughs> there was a very clear line between oh, yes. geek and other, and geek just meant you <laughs> yeah. were you were you were moderately tech savvy, right? Yep, we've been through you know tech savvy to you know tech comfortable to <laughs> right. you know way out, and then yes. on the other side it was everything from just you know regular pedestrian to no neck jock, right. Um, yeah, it's a completely <clears throat> different world back and then. And the lines are so completely blurred. The, you know, we, we live in a technological, and, and I think it, we live in a, in a nerddom gray area, whereas humans can't function without being able to 
engage to some extent, to some level, with technology. It's permeated the society. Um, and it's been integrated so right. much throughout all industries, all societies. I mean, you know, the like sports for because they you know we always had you know back in the eighties the, the sports guys were the ones that the you know they were viewed as the dumb jocks you know that were right. going to stuff the geeks into their locker. You, they rely on technology now in so many ways to determine how they played the game last last oh, Saturday. Oh yeah, how, absolutely. You. Know, how to improve their performance, you know, on the field, you know, velocity, even in the, the way that, that, that those sports events are broadcast and delivered to the screens. Right. You know, whether it's TV, satellite, you know, internet, you know, technology is so much more ingrained in our society and in, in all facets therein that, that we've never seen before. Oh, and you can't get, can't get away from it. Um, yeah. And also, uh, above and beyond the, the technology, I think just the, like you said, back in the 80s, some of the nerdier pursuits that we had are a lot more socially acceptable than they were back then. You know, like oh, yeah. like this list, it was close to 16% of the people, it was the number two fandom were Marvel movies. And, yeah, you know, and <laughs> looking back, um, <laughs> as a skinny ass little kid that worked in a comic book shop in 1986, there was <laughs> nothing fucking cool about that, man. Right? Nothing, <laughs> you know, like yeah. if you saw if I from sitting at the counter looking out the door, if I saw somebody from my high school, I like I ducked behind the computer so they wouldn't see yeah. me, man. So uh, completely different world. Yeah. And that's, that, that's, but, uh, that's what's so cool. Yeah, and I agree. I think it's cool. I am so happy that it, people can, you know, embrace whatever geekdom they're into. Mm -hmm. And it's I, – I can't say it's 100% socially acceptable because there's still that, that bias to some extent. But sure. I'm happy that they can share it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the internet where, you know, we – I know you read comic books back then, and mm -hmm. there weren't that many of us. And it, it, you can't build a community when you when a you're hiding and b you don't know who who else is out there. But you know, when you look at the bulletin boards and the move from there to social media, oh, yeah. now whatever my like nerdy pursuit is, be it painting miniatures or you know self publishing comic books or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you can find ten thousand other people like on Reddit that do yeah. the exact same thing. So yep. I think that's it's a fantastic time to pursue whatever weird ass hobby or interest that you have because there's a community out there to share it with. Absolutely. Um, and it's funny. I, I wonder if, <clears throat> if, you know, the, the, you know, identifiers, <clears throat> you know, nerds, geeks, dorks, are, is right. that going to go away? Because looking at the fandom, you know, I, I don't know anyone that, from you know, from whatever walk of life, geek, you know, from uh, you know, uh, that would be identified as a sports person, you know, uh, you know, dumb jock to uber right. uber nerd that doesn't like you know, or to some extent, you know, Harry Potter, Marvel, right. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Star Trek, it, you know, Batman, right? You know, I, I think it's we're we're coming into where we've been in. It, and there's an evolution that we're experiencing that the mass population has embraced their inner nerd to the point where it's not nerd. It's normal. It, I, I agree. It's, with it's, a certain it's the degree of fandom. I think where that, you know, you've got the, that, you've got the, you've got the zealots that yes. are on one side, but I think, the appreciation for you know, the the appreciation for the for the content for the format for the right yes that has become more universal. Well, and and again, it's it's accessibility too. Where yeah. in in nineteen eighty five, 
you couldn't well you could but most people couldn't have watched star star wars the original um movie Mm -hmm. 47 times by then without going to a theater over and over and over again now you can absorb that shit ad nauseum from a multitude of places in the privacy of your own home so i think that's why it makes sense that marvel movies and harry potter were so high up in that list is because those they yes they came from nerdy roots let's say but those are are made for mass consumption a hundred percent that that's yeah. for the general public and and yes um the, as you were making that point my my counter which you covered was the degree and yeah. there there's still if you if you look at any one of those fandoms there's still going to be that level of gatekeeping by the, the and i'm using air quotes the hardcore fans that mm-hmm. especially especially marvel if you look at that like um People people thoroughly enjoy the characters in the movies, and they love following that. And you know yeah. the history that it, it's what a decade in now that they're they're building this this Marvel Cinematic Universe, or however many years we're into it now. But for every person that's excited about that, there's the the guy behind them saying, "Well, no, you're not a real fan unless mm-hmm. you X Y Z. You know, you've been right. writing the books forever, and you know, yeah." And had a real so, thing. Yeah, the, the, the Simpsons comic book guy. He's real, and he's he is he's, Legion, dude. He's he is Legion. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I know for every for every nerdy pursuit that you you scratch, that guy is right there. Um, yeah. He exists, and yes. Gatekeeping is totally a thing, which, and again, I kind of understand it because sure. there wasn't this, this, um, it, it wasn't as acceptable back then. So, yes, um, Simpsons comic book guy probably got picked on for the same things that now the cool people are doing out in the open. Yeah. So, I, I understand the, the anger and hostility, and that, like, well, you can't be a real fan unless you've blah, blah, blah. Right. I get it, but man, it, I, it's, it's time to let go. Just op- open up the gates and let everybody in, and let's right. enjoy it for what it is. Exactly. It, you know, it, I, I totally get the idea, the, the, you know, the mentality of, well, I mean, you, well, yeah, this is the velvet rope, and only only the real fans right. get it. You know? Yeah. Or you know, the hierarchy of understanding. You know? Right. Uh, and I totally understand that, because, yeah, now it's like, now you're a fan. <clears throat> Of the thing you ridiculed me for, yes, thirty years 100%. ago. Yep, that no, was mine. We, that we was will mine. not sit at the same table, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you know, for some of those guys, that's all they had. You know, all yeah. And back then, again, being fifteen and sixteen, that uh, all I had were my my comics. Mm-hmm. So to just all of a sudden, like everybody has that that like it, it loses its specialness you know it's not unique to me if yeah. everybody has a, a whoopee then you know it's no big deal yeah it was you know the wait a minute no the live action of this was was my dream right yes oh you, god yes you don't get why are you enjoying this <laughs> this is I something guess... i wanted <laughs> Yes, and I think that's <laughs> why unfair, for, but it's true. No, no, it, it's a hundred percent. And in nineteen eighty nine, I think that's why I hated a Batman so much. The the Michael Keaton movie. really. Oh yeah, did you? I, I I was comic book guy back then. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. not. I mean, if you think about it, when that came out, and it was campy, dude. Sure, it was camp. So I had just finished reading Watchmen. I had just finished reading Dark Knight oh, Returns. Yeah. I had just finished reading Batman Year One. You know, this was that that late. And that was eight, Death in the nine, Family eight. came out around that time. Yes, yes, this was that oh, dark, dark period yeah. where Batman was that that brooding, hurt character that, like, you know, I, I break people just to feel something. Bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, and then you know, fucking Mister Mom comes out. As Batman? Like, come on, dude. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in I retrospect, it. yes, I think it was fabulous. But at the time, I, I was so, like, hashtag not my Batman 
You know, this yeah. this is not what I <laughs> I signed up for. <laughs> yeah, I was leery when they cast Keaton, but then I saw it without. And again, I, I was at the time, and, and historically, I'm, I'm not a DC guy. Um, I was never a big Batman fan, but you, you can't you can't enjoy that world without being affected. You know, you can't avoid Batman if you're going to be in, in, enjoying comics. Right. Or be in, in that universe. So I was very understood. I totally understood to my extent as a right. spectator, Batman. Um, yes. But seeing the movie, I was like, wow, this is great. This, this is something. This, yeah. it may not be perfect, but this is a gateway. This is something that is going to bring the world that so few of us love right. into the mainstream. Yep. No, you're 100 percent right. It did. And the it first thing I, you know, the, the one thing I thought about when when that movie started, I was like, my God, I wish they could do this with Avengers. Oh, so it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> That's some monkey paw shit there. <laughs> You're welcome, Disney. <laughs> you fuckers. Oh, we we have reached that. Um, I think it's overload. I mean, everybody has a different word for it. But I, I what was that, what was the most fatigue? Recent, if oh, fatigue sorry. is a good word. Um, Secret Invasion was that the last show on Disney? Oh the yeah, last Marvel show. So. Yeah. I, I had been watching them, but I, I, you know, I was keeping up. But I don't think I've liked any of the movies in, in a while. They're just they don't appeal to me anymore. And about two episodes into Secret Invasion, I just gave up. Did you? I'm like, I'm just going through the motions at this point. Yeah. I mean, not a bad looking choice. Back, yeah, looking back, I mean, and and I joke about it, but you know, I I don't give a damn about the Kree Wars. I, I have no dog in that fight. Right. It, I never did. Like that no. just seems such a distracting, extraneous bullshit. It, even yes, I mean, who cares? Yes. <laughs> and I and I mean, looking back as a teenager, you know, <laughs> picking up the books off the shelves, I didn't read the Marvel space stuff back then. If, if Fantastic Four, yes, I'll, I'll read yeah, that. That's where you see you know, this Fantastic Four was where we had the Super Scroll, and that <laughs> was kind of interesting. Yes. Because back then, it's like, okay, so he's got one arm of each fucking Fantastic Four person. Yeah. You know, okay. His leg is this, and his arm is this. Okay. So right. it was campy and cheesy even then, but it was like, all right, well, how are they going to do this? Right. But, but the, all, the all overreaching the... plot line was like, yeah. who cares about this fucking war? And DC, too. I mean, I did not give a shit about, what was it, the Legion of Superheroes? Was that the space group? In like the year four thousand or whatever they were. Oh, and they had the you know what was I'm talking the, about. The, what was the little space lighthouse they had out there? I forget, but uh, that stuff yeah. just didn't appeal to me. I I was more of a boots on the ground kind of guy, you know, like they give me yeah. Daredevil or X Men and stuff like that. Yep, stay yeah. rooted. Yeah, I was a big Captain America, Iron Man guy. I it's funny. I had never read the Secret Wars books until I found them in your room one day. I was like, I was stuck really? in your bed. Like, you and your mom were downstairs yelling at each other about something, and I was like trapped in your room. You're like, wait here. And like, you went downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and I started reading one of them. I'm like, shit, this is kind of cool. <laughs> Dude, Secret so Wars I, was a f- great fucking run. <laughs> Yep, I, I'd never, I had never dipped into that until it was stuck in your room, and I read like yeah. issue one, and and ended up like grabbing all the rest of them. Next yeah. time I was at Wizards, yeah, yeah, Secret Wars was fantastic. That was that was essentially, in my opinion, that was Marvel's version of Crisis. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, on Infinite Earth, because you had such a, a con, you know a, a conversion of all your favorites. Right, bad and good, and yep. then like absolutely, battle. and then of course Doctor Doom. I'm like, fuck you guys! I'm going to run this joint. <laughs> right, <laughs> you guys fight each other. I'm going to go find how this works and take over. Absolutely, and who can blame it? Uh, it's such a grip. Yeah, 
Doom's my favorite yeah. character. So of fun. Um, one thing I thought was weird was that one of their survey questions was mm-hmm. about internet platforms and by based on how nerdy they are. Oh, yeah. So, and I guess Twitch makes sense. Twitch makes sense. I'm surprised Discord didn't show up. That, yes. But again, if you look, where is... So there's this huge jump if you look at the the fandoms. Harry Potter was number one, mm-hmm. Marvel two, anime three, Star Wars four, and then you could even include Lord of the Rings top five. But after that, it, it's a very narrow band, you know. Yeah. So Discord, uh, yes, it's used by a lot of people, but it's used for one very specific thing, and that's gaming. Gaming, yeah. So gaming doesn't even show up in their their list of geekdoms, you know. But I think they, it could have been the way they phrase the questions too. Like, what's your right. favorite? You know, the name Discord is is it's it's social media, but it's not. I don't, I don't know. It is, yeah. And totally. honestly, it's, I mean, their, their model is social media. Yes, yes, 100% yes. So Twitch 100% makes sense. Discord should have been on there. Reddit is so weird because that's, yes, there's gaming on it, but I would say Reddit is more like a news site slash social media than a geek pursuit. Yeah, it's like social discussion and yeah, yeah, news and social discussion. Yeah. Uh, now, now, granted, like uh, all the like all my weird nerdy pursuits, uh, there's a subreddit for every single one of them, mm-hmm. and then there's a subreddit <laughs> of that subreddit that mocks it. So I, I follow <laughs> like everything I'm, I'm interested in. I follow. Yeah. But <laughs> I love it. There's, hey, I love this. Yeah. Well, we hate you for loving that. Yes, 100% yes. Like, follow, subscribe. <laughs> yep. So my favorite one, there's um, there's a vinyl subreddit about records, and it'll talk about releases and, you know, this version of Sgt. Pepper's I have, you know, from Europe, is this any good? Just bullshit like that. Yeah. But then there's also a subreddit called Vinyl Jerk that makes fun of those people. And so I, I love reading both of them. It's just, it's... Sure. It's good to get a the information, but then to to look at it as a tongue in cheek to say this is kind of a silly hobby, you know, and it's sort of a, a lighthearted look at like how obnoxious it can truly be. Yeah, well, get an, an internet reality check. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, so yeah, you know, the big old grain of salt. Yeah, but and. To, YouTube was third, which fine, whatever. Same, same as yeah. Reddit. You know, it's everything is out there, but but then after that was LinkedIn. I, I, <laughs> I that struck me as odd as well. It's not a yeah. nerdy platform. No, unless not at all. professional networking is nerdy. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. Or. I don't know, but I mean, it's it's like Reddit, you know. If, if you follow, you know, re, you know, the, you know the the Reddits that are within your industry or your wheelhouse or you know your your interest, as it were, professionally, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of the same way. But I think LinkedIn has, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to describe LinkedIn. It's it's like professional Facebook. It's like Facebook without the the stupidity, mm. <laughs> overt stupidity, I should say. I use Facebook or I use LinkedIn as a barometer for who's leaving their job at work. Like yeah. Typically, if you get an invite from somebody you currently work with to like, I forget, like link or be friends with, mm-hmm. that person's job hunting. They don't they don't give a shit like what articles you're reading. They yeah. want access to your 350 other network connections yep. to find a job. Oh, so any totally guilty of that. Them. Yeah. Like, you know, Joe Bob wants to, you know, link on LinkedIn. I'm like, aha. 
I need to get any projects on Bob's desk that have my name on them and slowly pull them back because that fucker is leaving. Yeah. And after that, um, they had TikTok and Twitter, which again, man, and none of those made sense to me. Twitch, Twitch and Discord should have been the only ones listed. (laughs) Pretty much. Nerdy Mm -hmm. platforms. Right. TikTok. The, sure, man. Yeah, because you can use your phone. Maybe that's you, it. You can use the video capabilities of your phone and Twitter because you know how to text. Oh, I. you may be onto something. Maybe I'm looking at it backwards. Maybe <clears> these <throat> aren't the nerdiest platforms. Maybe these are the ones that are viewed as nerdiest. Oh. You know, like if, if you close your eyes and picture your average Reddit user... It's a basement dweller. I bet you're seeing comic book guy from Simpsons in your head. Yeah, waiting to comment on something. Yes, is, absolutely. <laughs> as the subject matter expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yep. Actually, <laughs> Frankenstein was the doctor. His real name is Adam. Yes. <laughs> The green yes, person you're referring to is Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> I was that guy for Batman 89, and I apologize. It, it's I mean, all good. I admit it, but I, I got over myself, too. Um, and there was some other... What was the... I'm trying to find the data point that I that kind of stuck with me. Uh, okay, well, one of, it's not what I was thinking of. Oh! Um, that cosplay was the number one nerdiest hobby or activity. Um, yeah. uh, I have mad respect for people that cosplay. I think not only do you, you you're putting yourself out there and you're exposing your, your fandom, mm-hmm. but you also, you have to be good at so many other things to get there, like leather craft and metal craft. Yeah. And, you know, There's a lot of skill that goes into that. Yes. To so, do it effectively. Yes, so they're investing a lot of their time and their money and their energy into this, and I have mm-hmm. mad respect for cosplayers, but that is by far not the nerdiest of activities. Because no. it, LARPers, I think LARPers. LARPers, that not only do they incorporate everything the cosplay is, but then they go outside and play in those clothes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it's the It's the... Ballsiest activity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I mad respect for Lorpa. I, I, I dig it. Cosplay, it, it it all strikes me as a little bit odd, um, but I cannot discount. Yeah, the, the time, the effort, the yeah. skill that right. goes into those people engaging in those activities. Um, yes, so yeah, mad respect. Uh, but but uh, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, and I apologetically minimal understanding. Right. Well, it it's not something that most people are exposed to on a, on a day to day basis. You mm-hmm. know, um, the only reason I knew anything about it was because of going to comic book conventions all the time. Mm-hmm. So. I was surrounded by people that were in cosplay. Some of them had tables to advertise their own, um, like TikTok and you know their YouTube channel, and it, it was there as a source of income. So, sure, yeah, I, I got to know quite a few of them. So, yeah, no, I guess to your point, it's not like walking around and going to work and going out to dinner. You're going to run into people in cosplay. I think you you kind of have to go to them. So it's understandable that there's not a lot of um, uh, general knowledge about it, I guess I'd say. Sure. No, but I, I love um, seeing the reports. You know, they do it at, at San Diego, Comic-Con. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And seeing these 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 folks that show up, and it's like, right. damn, that is fantastic. Um, yeah, so I mean, mad respect. But personally, I, I don't get it. Right. 
but you know, and that, and then that, that, that's my own shortcoming. I'm not that high level of geek. Yeah, or uh, fan. And again, yeah, and you, I respect someone who embraces that. Agree. Yeah. Because and, and again, that's that that depth of of fandom that you have to you have to look at something and think, I want to spend a thousand hours reproducing this. Yeah. And I'm not I, there. Yeah. And there's yeah. nothing. There um probably a, a lot of cities have um stormtrooper um uh, what is groups. It? Oh, what are they called? Division five oh eight, what are they what are they what are they? There's a an actual name for it. They're 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 a group. Yeah, I I cannot remember of the start with stormtrooper cosplay of the, like section five hundred eight. Their company or there's some I think ah, I can't remember. But yeah, yeah. But the twenty uh, everywhere. Season one of Mandalorian yeah. called in those those cosplayers that had the stormtrooper the stormtrooper guys to be extras in a couple oh, in several scenes. Kidding. Yeah, that's cool as uh, because they had, you know, screen accurate uniforms. Right. Oh yeah, these guys go all in, and it's an expensive hobby. Oh yeah, um, all of their um, their like public shows that they do when they show up to events as in mass, mm-hmm. um, they collect for charity. So they're they're making money yeah. for charities while they're out there, but just that that level of of um, commitment to think, you know, I'm going to spend tens of thousands of dollars recreating a character from my movie fandom that is basically just cannon fodder. You know, that... Yeah. <laughs> I, Legion, I, I respect the shit out of those guys. Legion 501. Mm. That's the group mm. of the cosplayers. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so it is cool. But, yeah, it's, just, it's something I never, like, dude, I, I think Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, would you, like, dedicate a, a room in your house to metallurgy and leatherwork and sewing and right? all of that? No, to, absolutely to not. Be the so, tallest Jawa like, in the world. I totally respect that. <laughs> it, I don't understand it. Right. Like I don't understand the zeal. Yeah, I can see that. But I appreciate it. Right. I respect it. Um. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's weird. Like I I because I dig all these things. Right. You know, but. <laughs> Not to the extent that I would, you know, dedicate a room in my house to it or devote, you know, thousands of hours of study. Right. And, you know, practice to, to right. create. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And again, um, I've, I've got, I've got 10 thumbs. So like anything that they <laughs> create is right. just gobsmacking to me. Like, oh my God. Like, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. We were at uh, Renfest this past Sunday, and yeah. again, my that's a nerdy pursuit in and of itself. It's got a bad rap with people, but honestly, it's the yeah. best day drinking, shopping, and people watching you will do all year. It is right there. And yeah. just like the cosplayers, the, the people that wear costumes, and the, the ones that go all in, man, it's just, it blows my mind how talented they are. I love seeing, like, families that like the husband and wife will dress up and little kids have like costumes themselves that the parents have put together. That, that shit's adorable to me. And I, I love that stuff. <laughs> Got the plagues, the, the pox. Yeah. You know, their cheeks. It's all, there was um, like a family of dragons and um, just some cute shit. Like there's a dad that had, it was fantasy weekend, which is typically like fairies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But this guy had made his daughter like little baby dragon wings. And so she had a little dragon tail, little dragon wings, and it was just adorable. So I, I love that. Like like you said, that that level of dedication. I, I have mad respect for that. I guess there's 
there's nothing I like that much that I'm willing to spend the, that kind of time in consideration. So, yeah. teach his own. Well, the thing is, I mean, if you look at, you know, the the fandom, everything on that list, Harry Potter, Marvel, anime, I'm not totally familiar with, but I mean, it's usually, anime is usually Heroes, Journey, David and Goliath sort of shit. It was Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Star Trek. You know, those are the visions of our best selves. Mm-hmm. That's true. Those are our, our best selves overcoming ridiculous adversity. So to to embrace that fan, to embrace those th- th- that that content, to embrace those worlds, to to immerse yourself, you know, without detaching from reality, to embrace yourselves to those universes, isn't that really just kind of hoping for the best? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in my head, the way I look at it is, is yeah. And it's, I've always been that way with, with 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 sci-fi and fantasy. It's like all these stories, you know, with few exception, it, it, it paints a picture of what we could, how we could be the best we could be, or how we could overcome a certain, you know, obstacles and challenges without losing our humanity or using our humanity as the catalyst to overcome obstacles. Wow. Wow. Damn, that was deep. So when I see people embracing what would ordinarily be, Jesus, look at this fucking guy. Right. No, man, go. Do that because (laughs) (laughs) you've taken it a step further. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. You know, You've you've embraced the hope, but now you're wearing it as a cape. <laughs> wow, you were just knocking him out of the park this week, dude. That's that's <laughs> that's that's great. Uh, but I agree with you, you know. And um, I I have a friend at work that is also has geekly pursuits, and I give him shit sometimes because he plays magic, and you know I, I talk to him about the hierarchy of nerddom. You know, like, here's me, oh, you know, yeah. self-publishing comic books. It doesn't get much worse than that. But then no, a magic. couple layers under that, there's magic. There's magic right I th- there. Uh, I, I think magic's about a couple steps ahead of that. Really? The zealots. The magic zealots? Yeah. Yeah, and I guess <laughs> my my only exposure I, I to it, um, for, for many years, I, I would work at this video game store for just for store credit i worked just saturdays just by myself for 12 hours and i would get this big pocket of store credit at the end of the day so the owner of the store would have um he would let the magic kids come in and play on saturday afternoons Mm -hmm. and just it was terrible because they were all they were loud stinky nerds and i just i hated that part of the day so again i'm in a video game store and it's nowhere to look down on anybody, but when those guys walked in, I'm like, "Huh, you know, I, I wish there was a locker here I could <laughs> shove you." <laughs> You're the worst of us. <laughs> exactly. You embarrass us all. You dishonor the family. Yeah, but I mean, and and again, I give my my buddy at work shit about it, but in all honesty, you know, when you see those guys that have binders and binders and binders of cards, it's the same thing. I'm like, I have respect for the fact that you, you don't give a shit what anybody thinks. You, you find joy in this and you pursue it. And I am all for yeah. that. You know, if, if it doesn't hurt anybody else and it makes you happy, go all in, eat it all. Yeah. I don't know, those magic kids. Oh, just smelled like Doritos and sadness in there when they would leave. 
do yourselves and your family a favor. Hach black. <laughs> oh, and it, you know, it's sad to have to threaten a 19, 20 year old with, I'm going to call your mom, make her come pick you up and take you home. But <laughs> by God, I, I played that card a couple times. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, Tom, this was a good find, man. I think so. And I think, you know, the overall takeaway is that nerddom, geekdom, it, it, it's permeated society. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that someone is, is an uber Star Wars fan or, or a Star Trek fan. Right. Um, it's not a, a big deal anymore. You know, no. especially like... With us Gen Xers, you know, we had kids that were so into Minecraft. Right. Um, the, shit, I took, we took Dylan to Minecraft 2012. Minecon. <laughs> Minecon 2012. Uh, because he was really into Minecraft. And oh, it was really was terrible. Fun. Hmm? Really? Yeah. Oh. It, it was not horrible. <laughs> uh, well, it didn't suck that it was in Paris, but... It wasn't a bad. It was Disney, uh, Disney okay. Empire. So right. it was a good time. And Dylan loved it. So cool. You know, yeah, man. And Minecraft. You know, it, it, and he grew up with Harry Potter. I mean, I think all of us kind of, at least myself, got into Harry Potter because of my son. Right. Like these are cool stories. These are great books. Not great books, but I mean, these are entertaining books. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, Star Trek. You know, I took. I don't have, but it, like a decade. I, I do think it's like to your point. It, it's yes, yes. Good. Oh, I was saying. just going to say it was. It it's easier now, like you said, to be that Uber fan compared yeah. to when we were growing up. You know, like except for the other people that liked Star Trek, you didn't want anybody knowing that you liked Star Trek, you know? Right. Which, and now it's okay. In hindsight, I'm like, God, like Star Trek is nothing but the embodiment of the best that we could be. Sure. It's, it's all Roddenberry wanted to show. Right. But at that time, you couldn't wave that flag, though. That that no, oh no. god, no, <laughs> oh shit, no. I mean, you right. could like the original Star Wars that came, you know, the, right? But because everybody saw that, so it was okay to yeah. say oh, I'm a Star Wars fan and wear the R two D two T shirt. Um, but beyond that, as as that franchise evolved, or right. evolved, 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 and whatnot. Um, yeah, that became a lot more tenuous. Yes. Star Trek? Yeah. Yeah, that was a dividing line. Like, oh my God, really? Really Star Trek? <laughs> like, how right. can you not? You've you've obviously not seen it. <laughs> and so and and again, I, I love I, I'm a much bigger Star Trek fan than I am Star Wars. Um mm-hmm. I, I I love everything about it. It's so much fun. But then it's the same thing, like there's that level of fandom. So, uh, you know, like, well, it just started back up again. Um, Lower Decks. Oh, God. Um, the new Fabulous. season started. And <laughs> I'll sit and watch it. And, like, I enjoyed the hell out of that episode. I yeah. laughed. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I love everybody's voice work. And the art is great. And then I'll yeah. get online, like, on AV Club and read a review. And then you get into the comments. And it, oh. it's those guys that are like, like, oh, you know. The references they made to season two, episode one of the original series, I find a bit lackluster. Yeah, yeah those guys. It's the really could have done better to expand me. on this. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, yes, that's not the original knife that was used. You know, in 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 Deep Space Nine, I, I find that offensive. Yeah, yeah. Like you're ruining it for everybody else. I great that you know right. that and you want to make that point, but Jesus Christ, dude! Like, yeah. go get some fresh air. It's that level that <laughs> I find detracting yes. and, detri- and, and detrimental. Oh, to absolutely. The, the pur- I mean, to the purpose at- of the show, the philosophy behind it, the Roddenberry philosophy oh. behind why. Yes. 
Well, look how close Rick and Morty came to not being because the fandom was so toxic that yeah. it, it was hard for the guy making it to keep going because of how shitty Which, his fans were. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's crazy. What, You've got shitty fans. No, you've got a group of very vocal, a very vocal minority. Yes. That are out to get you. Those are not fans. Right. I am so glad that he powered through that because Rick and Morty's fucking brilliant Mm -hmm. on on, (laughs) on so many levels. I mean, it's it's wrong. It's right. It's, uh, yeah. It's stupid. It's brilliant. it's, it's, It's got everything. Oh yeah, and and I, I mean to a point like I, I laugh at those guys online like with without an engineering degree I don't even understand how you can like this show. Like I mean to reverse that there nerd, um, <laughs> unless you came from a fucked up family, I don't think you can appreciate how funny this show is. You know, right? <laughs> that is so That's much of the it's underlying. About. That is so much of the underlying humor of that whole show. Is like That's what it's about, right? <laughs> yeah. This is a fucked up family. Insert craziness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so somebody that had never watched that show just started. And I said, okay. I'm like, it's funny. But when you get to the end of season one, you're going to realize how fucking dark this really the is. whole thing is. Yep. Yeah. It's got so, that adventure like, time closing, factor. Yeah. So, that, that closing scene at the end of season one, where they're like burying the real ones and they're the fake ones. Like, oh my God. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> what the fuck have I been watching? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to think I was a good person. <laughs> yeah. And here I am just kind of muddling along like, ha ha, the grandpa's drunk. I get this part. And then... That <laughs> <laughs> big record script. Zzzz. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Like, oh, they went there, did they? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. And then it just goes, like, on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, didn't... Didn't dwell on it, and in fact, just exponentially made it worse. You know, I just love like that they would uh, throughout it, because yeah, I mean, the end of season one is like, is there's that, yeah, but then they would sort of like, exclamation point. Those exclamation points would would show up throughout right. the other episodes throughout the seasons. Like, oh yeah, yeah you realize you uh, realize the originals are dead, right? <laughs> Yeah, you realize that those, <laughs> those are the fourth ones we've seen die, right? <laughs> um, and now, granted, the the quality has gone down a little bit throughout the years, but yeah. I, I do find it funny that whenever they get into a jam that's so bad that they're like, "We need to find one that's on a place that we like and murder them so we can take over mm-hmm. their lives." You know, there's that that that's their solution to everything. Yeah, like, like the Muppets. I've, yeah, Jim Henson would just like throw penguins into the air. This one's like, all right, we'll murder, we'll murder them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to get out of this. We don't have any penguins. Murder them. <laughs> ah, good times. Indeed. Mm. Yes. Well, this was a good list, dude. I, I'm so happy you found this. Um, don't get me wrong. I love bad mouthing people that make bad decisions with their lives. Oh, and sure. I, I live oh for God. that. But, yeah. but every once in a while, it's fun to dig into these little, um, um, you know, tidbits little of information that you come across. Surveys and, you know, of, of debatable accuracy, but interesting yeah. nonetheless. Again, Discussion I, I think, topics. I think it's funny that in the actual article that you found, and it must have been from an ABC website, that yeah. right there at the end, it's survey questions, methodology, and results have not been verified or endorsed by ABC News or the Walt Disney <laughs> Company. So yeah. their lawyers are thinking the same things I am. It's like, this is fun, but yeah, it's not facts. It's, you know? it's not science. It's, 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 not. it's not fact. It's, yeah. 
It's very small it's fun. aggregate. Yeah. So, short takeaway, I guess, um, again, whatever makes you happy, if you're not hurting somebody, embrace it. And Absolutely. ignore the haters. There are at least two other people out there in the world that love what you love. Mm-hmm. And if it brings you joy in this this dark, dark world we live in, then just just run with it and have yeah. fun with it. Damn. That's beautiful. I got nothing. Thanks, man. Thanks. And that's what we're all about, you know? Just, just do what you love. Uh, right. And until you do it drunk and then we <clears throat> come after you. Well, until you do it with like you know, you. an axe or a knife or something. <laughs> right. Don't do it naked in public. <laughs> Don't do it naked in public. Don't do it with a you know a rampage. A car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid the rampage, because that's my I've got a special search for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll find you. <laughs> I will find we'll you. I've got a <laughs> Google is looking for you. I I've told it <laughs> to search for rampage, and then a separate <laughs> one for naked rampage, of course. But <laughs> rampage nonetheless. Yeah, because I'm all about the naked. Amen to that, brother. And on that note, um, thank you for being with us for a, another episode. Yeah, and we wish you well. We'll, we'll see you again in October. Yeah, that's the next one. That's the next one. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.